This week in Jamaica Now, all eyes now on the Senate as the government moves to the final stage in the CCJ journey. And what if the vote fails in the Senate? Well, legally speaking, the bills can be retabled. Help coming for victims of massive bushfire. What the IMF review team had to say about Jamaica's missed primary surplus target and stiffer penalties coming for crimes against children. These stories and more after the break. Oftentimes we interview children and they are so elated to know that someone has come to hear my side. Someone is there to advocate on my behalf and my rights are important and it gives them a sense of strength, resilience and I'm happy to be able to impart that. I'm Carlene Brown and this is Jamaica Now. The government is hoping a member of the opposition in the Senate will break ranks and vote in favor of the bills to replace the United Kingdom-based Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Justice CCJ as Jamaica's final court of appeal. Already at least opposition member of parliament Delroy Chuck has expressed confidence that the government will not be able to sway any opposition senators. You think the government will fail there? Yes. Why? You won't have a senator breaking ranks with the opposition? To the best of my knowledge and understanding, they won't. No yeah. one will. And oh. your, your imputation about um, Arthur Williams is unfounded and misguided. Oh, I see. Mr. Mm. Williams has uh, so assured you. Well, from all the, my discussions with him, then, I think the speculations are unfounded. Last week, Tuesday, the House of Representatives approved the CCJ bills with the government using its majority to push through the legislation. However, it will need the backing of at least one opposition senator when the bills go before the upper house in three weeks' time. And what if the vote fails in the Senate? Attorney at law Sheena Stubbs Gibson says the government's efforts would also fail to establish the CCJ as the final appellate court. I think that the matter of the CCJ replacing the Privy Council is such an important issue that if the, the opposition party is not willing to, if no member of the opposition party is willing to, to break ranks and to vote with the government's side, that I think the government side should uh, follow the course set out in the Constitution and put the matter to referendums, thereby avoiding the necessity for Senate approval. The government has pledged to help the people who have lost homes and produce in the fire which raged in sections of East Rural St. Andrew for almost two weeks. In the meantime, the people are continuing to cut their losses. It's been more than a week since a massive bushfire has been raging in sections of East Rural St. Andrew and farmers are counting their losses. On Monday, state officials said it will take about $200 million to replace lost coffee. In fact, the state minister in the Agriculture Ministry, Luther Buchanan, says over the next three years, farmers will suffer a loss of $30 million a year. But the damage goes beyond coffee. Pineapples and bananas have also been lost. The president of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Senator Norman Grant, says residents of Flamstead, Lime Tree, Tower Hill, Salt Hill, Robertsfield and Craig Hill have lost farms and houses. This easily can be categorized as a disaster. I don't think it's premature to consider the, the area affected um, as a disaster zone as, as a part of the process to bring as much relief to both the farmers and the residents as possible. Damian Mitchell for the Gleaner Online. Meanwhile, the head of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Commissioner Errol Mowat, revealed last week that firefighters had to put their lives at risk in attempts to put out the massive bushfire. Commissioner Mowat revealed that the fire brigade has had to be inserting men directly into hot zones to fight the flames, a move which he notes goes against best practice. But he said the fire brigade has never had to fight such a huge fire in such hilly terrain and unconventional methods have had to be employed. The International Monetary Fund IMF new chief of missions to Jamaica, Uma Ramakrishnan, last week sought to assure that there is no need to worry about the fact that the country missed its nominal primary surplus target. Minor deviations happen and that's how we see the best revenue tar uh, performance target. 
So in that sense, as long as the critical program goals remain, which we think is the case for Jamaica, we have routine procedures that we followed to um, go ahead with the completion of the review without delay on time to keep things on schedule and on track. Jamaica missed the nominal primary surplus target of $121 billion by $4 billion in the eighth review period up to March, but achieved the stipulated 7.5% target. And Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says the government will have to cut back on spending in the economy if public sector workers are to get more than the 5% increase the government has proposed. Public sector workers are currently locked in negotiations with the government for a new wage contract following five years of wage freeze. The government has offered 5% over two years, which has been rejected by the unions. Noting that the government must reduce the wage bill as a percent of GDP to 9% by next year. Phillips said meeting the target is critical to the economic reform program. It cost the Jamaican taxpayers more than $270 million to host United States President Barack Obama in April, but the figure could rise. Minister with Responsibility for Information Senator Sandra Faulkner last week disclosed that $207 million was spent on road rehabilitation and $66 million on the various events associated with the visit. She said that cost includes expenses associated with providing security, media coverage and accommodation. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune into Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carleen Brown reminding you to take care of our children this Child's Month and always. I have been into homes where. Um, I can't remember one home in deep rural Jamaica when I, where when I walked into the little one room, the little children were eating on the floor because they didn't even have a table. I've seen cases like that and yet they run and they hug me and they smile and they're so hopeful and it really breaks my heart. But they inspire you because the children are hopeful regardless of how poor they are.